Sorry. All right, uh, <laughs> welcome everyone. Uh, thanks for coming. So uh, today we're going to be talking about Archelion uh, and its growing ecosystem. Um, my name is Dan Allen. I am the community manager for Archelion. Um, next to me is Ajak Knudsen. He's the uh, project and technical lead. And uh, Lukash, who's a lead of several of the modules, including uh, Warp, uh, which we'll be talking about today. So let's, let's start out with that word testing. Uh, it's, it's some, perhaps some stigmas around it. So uh, first of all, who loves testing? All right, so by the end, we want two hands up from everyone. <laughs> because what we're going to do is we're going to make a topic which is boring, incredibly interesting. And we're going to do it by introducing some aliens and some really powerful technology. But, but, but I think that we're going to make you realize that this is testing really is a, does this a disservice. It's not a really good word for what we are going to be able to show you today. So um, I, I think that, so some of you are university students. Uh, how many university students do we have? About, about half of you. So how many, and this is for everyone, how many people are learning a technology, any technology, right now? Okay, so the thing about learning a technology is that you've got to try it, right? And in order to try it, you need some way to, to be able to try it. So you, so you hack together some hello world. That's fine for some things, but for other things, uh, it's a little bit more involved to get the thing to actually run. So what, before we even talk about testing, what we're doing, you know, testing software for some particular job or whatever, we're, we're testing our understanding and so we need to have a sandbox in which we can work. And so then you kind of progress through. And then you, you, you start with, well, how does this work? And, and then you kind of move to, does this work? And as you go further and further along, um, and you really get into what would be technically called testing, the way that we think of it, it's, should this actually work this way? You know, is this providing the, uh, did I implement the features that are being requested of this app? So, Testing is, is a much broader topic, and it really has to do with human understanding. So there's, there's a, a quote that we picked up on the Twitter stream uh, on Archelian that we really like to start with. And the quote goes, the purpose of automated testing is to enable change. Right? The fact that it verifies stuff, well, that's kind of just a side effect. Because technology is always changing. Our understanding is always changing. And what we want to do is we want to have confidence because I think that's what this really is, is change and confidence are very closely related to each other. You're not going to want to touch the code unless you're sure that what you're touching is going to move things forward and not totally break the thing. So one of the things that we always talk about in our killing is this idea of a testing gap. And the, and the way that I got to look at this is that when you, when you read about testing uh, for the first time, unit testing, it all sounds so good. You know, a lot of, a lot of tech, um, subjects that you, you come across, right, in the beginning, it, it's, it's like in a utopia. It's so, it's so well defined. Math, for instance, you always get even numbers, or you always get whole numbers as answers, right? So you know that you got the problem right if you didn't get 3.712946. That probably is wrong, because, like, why would they have that as the answer? But as you go, and so unit tests are very much like that. And then as you progress on, things change a little bit. So unit testing is, is taking something in isolation, uh, a well-known environment, and with known inputs, the output is whole numbers. Beautiful. And I can look in the back of the textbook and says, yep, six, that's the answer. Or the answer to the, uh, you, you know, the answer to the question of uh, why are we here is 42, nice even number. Um, but, you know, this is kind of what testing is really like in the real world. Uh, what happens, you know, when we put a little bit of extra load? And the fact there's a, lights here, I'll tell a real quick story. So, um, we're not, I, I'm from the United States, but we're not in the United States, so I'm not going to assume that um, all of you have seen the Super Bowl. But how many of you know what happened during the Super Bowl that was in, of interest? <laughs> yeah? What happened? Power outage, right? Power outage. Okay, so if you read the story about what happened, of course, the first thing was, blame the power company. It's power, it must have been them. And when you look closely at the analysis they did afterwards, it basically came down to, they never actually tested that the stadium would be able to support that load of power. 
right? So basically, they were just going on faith. Well, it should work in theory. The, the manual says, you know, if I tweak all these switches, yeah, this should work. This should work. Are you going to bank millions of dollars in, you know, all the revenue that comes through the Super Bowl on, well, I, it should work. And we know that when it should work, it never does. So uh, it kind of gets to the core principles of Archelian. I, I think that the, the real thing here is about confidence. Wouldn't it be amazing if, if someone came to you and says, does this software work? And you looked at them and you said, of course it does. Well, when we deploy this thing, is, are they going to get exceptions when we deploy it? No. <laughs> and that's, you know, it, it sounds a bit like, hubris, because it would be if you didn't have something to back it up with. But if you said, well, I have 750 tests, so there are going to be one of two things that happens here. Either absolutely it will, be, it will work, or I'm going to be really interested to find out why it doesn't, because it means that I'm missing some test or some understanding of, of how I should validate the software. I want to know, as opposed to I'm going to run for the hills. Okay? So we're going to try to turn that confidence around uh, for you. So I'm going to turn it over to Ajak, and he's going to talk uh, a little bit about the core principles and the core uh, architecture of Archelian. Yep. Yep. So when we started out with, with making the, the integration framework in itself, which is Archelian, uh, we, we needed to extract away everything that has to do with the environment that the test is going to run in, because there's multiple possible environments where this is going to run. And we, we don't want to bind the test to a specific uh, container in this case. So the first rule is the test itself is going to be portable to any, any of the supported containers, of course, being that the container actually supports what you're trying to, to, to test. And the second one is that I'm sure that everyone's been looking at the build scripts going by, taking longer, longer and longer to run. And when you're sitting there encoding and you want to try to see if this actually works, you have to swap over to Maven and you've got to wait about 30 minutes or so until it builds the enterprise application that you're building, deploys it, and then you can see, does it work? And by the time you come back, you've been through Twitter, Google+, you have been through every other social media, gotten coffee and lunch. And what you were doing before you actually went to wait for that build, you have no idea anymore. So something failed somewhere. So we wanted it to be able to run the same advanced test from both inside the, inside the IDE, where you're working, where you have the flow, as well as being able to automate it through, through the build systems and uh, to use Jenkins or that kind of automated build systems. And the next core principle is that there is no need to reinvent the whole world. Uh, there is a lot of testing frameworks out there that, that actually does a fairly good job uh, the problem is that they're all scattered around, and one framework tests a bit of this here and, and another one up here, and there's nothing to kind of combine them together. There's nothing to, to glue them into one a coherent solution, in a sense, and they're all missing parts of the whole story. So our killing want to bring that story, and then we can reuse the existing frameworks that are out there. So when we set out to build the core, uh, we knew that we wanted to give the power back to the user that is actually going to write the tests here and not, not let it be the typical fire brigade that the most testers end up being, that production broke again. So we need to fix it and we, hopefully we can make a test for it or not or we just fix the code. We wanted you to be in control and be able to, to um, get rid of the bugs instead of the bugs kind of controlling you and bugging you basically. So we needed to be flexible in a sense that, <laughs> in a sense that um, there's a lot of technologies out there, uh, component models like CDI and EGB and um, a lot of different technologies. And we needed to be flexible in the way we integrate with these to allow ourselves to both support what's coming now, the um, uh, component models, for instance, that we actually know about, but we also need to be flexible enough to support what's coming next. And in the same way, we need to be extendable in that we only know about these, this subset of the current technologies or we only have, well, let's face it, time to implement this subset of technologies and what's coming next or what's 
someone else has an idea about integrating, we need to be able to just plug that up on top without having to rebuild the whole thing from scratch, basically. So uh, in the core of Archelian, there is a tiny little event machine, which is basically just passing events of, of things that are happening of, 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 of interest. It's uh, kind of like the CDI model, uh, if anyone's familiar with that. How many know CDI? All right. Uh, it has its observers and it has its uh, events. So you can fire an event and some, someone will observe that event and can, can act upon what's been happening. So that's the inner, inner heart of Archelian. And then uh, things that the um, Archelian core as well is extensions upon extensions upon extensions. So we're eating our own dog food, basically. And core comes with three, three uh, essential extensions. The first one being the test extension. So combine Archelian, the heart, with the test extension. And you have a um, common layer between all the different test frameworks. So we hook into know when JUnit is firing a before test class uh, event or an after test class. And we can then do things within, within that cycle. So at this point, you can make any arbitrary uh, extension that works on a, uh, within the same JVM as, as a test. And you can, without having to support all the different test frameworks yourself, you can just rely on Archelian to actually do that integration for you. And then on the other side, we have a container extension, so we can handle the life cycles of, of containers to start them up, to connect to them, and to deploy to them, to, to, to set up the different environments. And if you're just using the heart of Archelian with the container extension, it kind of works as any container controller. You can think like the Jetty Run in Maven, for instance. You can just start up a container or stop it or deploy something to it. Uh, but of course, it would be nice to be able to combine those two. So during a test, you can actually uh, deploy something to the container or start up as part of the test lifecycle. And that's what the container test extension does. So that would, for instance, bind the, when the before class event happens in the test framework, it will pipe that through to the container extension and do a start container or deploy to the container. And similar on the, the breakdowns, it will then undeploy from the container or stop stop the container. So we're going to have a, just to see how some of this, this looks. <clears throat> see what a basic JUnit uh, test would look like. It's basically just a class that is annotated some method with the test annotation and that will run. So the Archelian version of that is just adding a, the Archelian runner on top, basically telling JUnit to hand over the control of the test execution to Archelian. Then there's this funky little thing called deployment, which is a way of describing the intended environment that you want to run in. So that being an application or a component, the thing under test. So if you're testing a, a web application, you will deploy some uh, JSF pages or HTML, uh, maybe some servlets, maybe some filters. And that's within the scope of what this test is supposed to execute on. And this can scale from being a single component to a, to a big enterprise application, basically, being multiple, uh, multiple web applications within an enterprise archive or resource adapters or EGBs or whatever arbitrary deployment you want. And then when this is running, we then have the ability to inject back in the resources that are available to you. So in this case, we're just injecting back the MyBean, which is in this case a CDI bean. That's the actual instance that, been run, that is running within the defined deployment. And then you can insert and operate on that, um, that uh, piece of integration code, basically, as you would any other unit test. So for the, the bit about defining the deployment, we have a an API called Shrinkwrap, which is a Java Fluent API for defining, defining the, uh, the application structure or for the packaging structure. As we saw, it, it can do web applications, but you can also do enterprise and enterprise archives, resource adapters, and you can expand upon that as much as you want. You can create your own version of a 
web archive to handle specific business needs uh, if you want to simplif simplify the raw API. And Resolver, which is Corral here, which is the lead sitting in front. <laughs> uh, it's basically a shrink wrap version of getting uh, hand uh, getting a hand on the Maven artifacts. So you can look up remote repositories and, and get the libraries in there. We'll, we'll then, of course, resolve tr transitive dependencies if, if wanted, etc. And then the descriptors part, you need to tweak this web XML in a specific way. You want to add security to it. You want to see that your component works with or without security. You can, of course, make a whole bunch of, of XML files on disk, but that becomes a bit cumbersome when you want the test to kind of be self-contained and see that to, to be able to easily read what this test does, then we have an API for that as well, where you can fluently create the different uh, descriptors from web XML, application XML, et cetera. So when, when we look at this test, there's nothing here that actually binds it to any specific environment, which, is the, which was the first principle. Well, it binds it to an, to an environment in the sense that there's a, there needs to be something here that can handle a web archive. And since we're using inject, there has to be something that can handle a, um, a CDI bean. And based on that, anyone have any uh, thoughts about where this could run? The one, okay. Well, basically anything from an embedded CDI container to a, um, a servlet container like Tomcat or Jetty, or to, to a full-blown E server like JBoss or, or Glassfish. And we basically uh, define how and where it's going to run based on the co configuration of the, of the environment that, it's the, um, the, uh, that our Killian starts up in. So we can define, uh, in this case, we're defining that we're going to run it against a remote JBoss AS server, saying that that server could be anywhere. It can be on our local machine, or it could be Something, something in the cloud somewhere. And it doesn't really matter to the test, it's just the adapter that handles the, the deployment and, and kind of forwarding the, the command from the client to, to the environment. Then we're gonna look at a little demo to see how, or some of how this could work. So in this case, we, wanna, we have a JSF page, a fairly simple JSF, JSF form. There's nothing fancy about the form in itself, but it's backed by a JSF uh, component, uh, which is backed by a CDI bean, and inputs something into the database using a um, um, EGB to uh, communicate with the entity manager and persisting the J JPA entities. That was a lot of acronyms in a row. Um, so what, we, so what we're seeing here is we have a application form out here. Uh, no, no, that's right. Uh, <laughs> no, no. An application form that is running in some form of application on a server. And there is a database here that we need to store the data in. So how do we test that in, in a sensible way? So looking at the test case, we're, we're defining our archive, which, is, which will contain our, our, um, our form, our backing beans, our um, repository to store it, and our database co configuration. Nothing more fancy than adding a few classes. But the approach we wanted to take here is that, well, we're going to we're going to um, uh, operate or test a HTTP page. So we should probably operate on that as if we were an actual client. So we're, we're going to execute this test in the client mode. And since our Killian, in this case, you can look, you have the, 
uh, the deployment where we know where this is being deployed, we know what we are deploying, so that means we can inject back in uh, resources like the, U the URL to where this uh, component, component is being deployed. So you don't need to hard code that this server has that IP or that server has that port, etc. And then we're using Selenium, which is a good tool for doing standard HTML types of testing, to inject the driver and we go on then to say that on the client side, we want to put up here, if we create the uh, client side, Oops. we want to create our JPI entity here, but we just want to say that this is the data that we're using. So that's the conference create random conference there. It's basically reusing our JPI entity. Then we want to navigate to this, to this page over here, and then we want to input the data into that field using the data from the JPA entity. So it has its, um, uh, its, um, its location, description, and end dates, and so on. So now we know what we're inputting. And we're doing that by finding the elements in the returned, in the returned HTML, of course to the form, if you scroll down a little bit. So then when we call the submit button on this form, we're saying that we want to push over during that execution, we want to warp it. So how do we draw warping? I guess something like that. <laughs> so while we're doing the submit, submit, we're actually passing on this data that we created to use the form, passing that over and warping it around and saying that when you have executed the submit and the submit basically then comes back and persists it down into the database, after that happens, oops, it died. After, oh, I reached the limit of lines, obviously. <laughs> After that happens, we want to verify that we can get that data back. Come on. We want to Am I touching something here? <laughs> it's possible maybe if there is a limit to the amount. To the amount of lines? Really? <laughs> Well, anyway, okay, it doesn't really matter. The point is that we want to, after we have executed that uh, HTTP request, and within the same uh, life, hey, kill my drawing. <laughs> <laughs> so nice. <laughs> oh, well. Anyway, so we want to verify that after this request and the submit has happened, it's being stored in the database. We want to see that when, w what we get back from the data database is the same data that we try to input in the form, which is done then in the after servlet event here. And we're saying that the object from the client side matches the thing that's been stored in the database going through the whole form. And that actually runs on the server? That runs on the server side, yes, exactly. Exactly. So you can inject back, as you see, you can still enrich it by injecting back the actual EGB reference, which is a local EGB that is running within the application. And the conference object was warped, so you mean like serialized? Yes. To the server? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, we can try to run it and see if that works. Uh, at this point, we have a, a JBoss AS7 application server that is already up and running which is one type of the container integrations, which just allow us to, to operate on something that exists already, or that, that is running. So it connects to it, it will deploy. No, he just started it. Oh, you just started it, okay. Well, then we started the container, and then. <laughs> there, it's just, see, just from the ID, just the standard JUnit run, and that's the only thing you need to do. Then it will, in the background, fire up the, um, the, um, the browser fill in the data, as you can see, and then run the test and undeploy the application. If you look at the log, you will see that it actually does 
um, I have it in the one. <laughs> uh, I will create the tables. It should have an insert there at some point. There's the deployment. Let's go further down. Uh, Hibernate is starting up. Creates a table and should further down insert some data. Starting weld further down, further down, further down. There it is, insert into conference. And further down, we should have a select as well to verify that that was actually coming out of it. So that's the full bone test going around from the client to the server and back. Um, swap. Or no, we don't need to swap. We have it here already. Except that we lost this one. Out of something. Yeah. Well, yeah, just need this one back to functioning on that one. <laughs> you can keep the screens, but. It's not working. No. Oh, there we go. Should be. Oh. Focus. Right. Where were we? <laughs> there we go. Right, so what's actually happening in the background there and how does it work? So the first thing that happens when Archelian starts up is, well, it kind of happens before. It happens based on the configuration step that you select what type of container do you want this to, this to run again. Is it an embedded container like Weld, Tomcat, or is it going up to being some kind of cloud service where we were running our application server? And then it will start or connect to that server, depending on what type of container you're, you're uh, specifying. If it's already running, it will just connect to it. If it's not running, it can start it. Oh, we're a bit size switch there, but okay. Then we come to the packaging phase, which is kind of executing that deploy method and figuring out based on the resources that, it, that, that are available to the client, uh, add those into into a, uh, a deployable unit, and as well, let our kill in itself append itself to that environment. So you can have your, um, your beans and your uh, descriptors, etc. then moved over to the uh, container and deployed. And then when the test execution comes along, you're actually then forwarding that test execution from the client side to the in-container uh, side. Or optionally, you can stay on the, the client side if you want to test a, a remote API. And then while executing that in container, it's, it's also reporting back what, what happened. So it's reporting back the state of the, of the test execution. And that's being piped back through the test framework. So any, any reporting, et cetera, that used or that your uh, normal framework or environment can support will still report. So it will support, be supported in like the Maven Surefire reports, it will be supported in Jenkins, and all of those can see the same results. And then, of course, we're doing the undeploy and cleanup phase. Some of the things we saw in, in this demo was that we have the enrichers that are injecting the different resources, like the Archelian resource and the drone resource. These are uh, test services that Archelian and its extension can provide to simplify the testing. We saw drone, which is um, handling all the life cycles of things like web driver, starting it up for you, starting the server, connecting it, fixing the, fixing the URL, configuring the browsers, and selecting which um, uh, browsers that, that, that you want to run against. And in drone's case, uh, it's normal since you want to test the HTML output, you're actually executing the, the test on the, the client side. So you're just poking at some remote endpoints. Uh, we saw warp. Warp is an interesting case because it actually allows you to do both, but within the same, uh, within the same life cycle. So when your HTTP request against the, the remote endpoint is executing, you can also arbitrarily 
of the before or after phases, depending on which integration it is in the servlet. You were before or after the servlet or JSF, you have the, all the uh, before and after rendering phases, etc. Where you can create objects, you can uh, insert data in the database, or you can verify that things happened. And as another example is the Archelian persistence extensions, which allows you to set up the database state up front and, for instance, verify that after the test is ran, the database state is in, is in an expected uh, state, basically containing the data. And that is an extension that is, only running, that is only running in container. So you have a variety of different methods for bo both testing and for, for writing the extensions. So if we were a quick demo again, basically see how you can, uh, the demo that we showed earlier was using uh, the, Chrome, the Chrome browser to, to run. So in this case, we want to change it to Firefox. And we want to run it against a managed, managed server instead to see how we can easily swap, swap between the different environments and, and containers. The, though the managed server is still a AS7, seven container, it would be how you would set it up on a Jenkins server, for instance. Hmm? So now instead of connecting to something that existed, the container is going to be started up as part of the test suite itself and being shut down when, when it uh, stops, or when it's done executing the tests. And we fire up Firefox instead of Chrome. And Houston, we have a problem. <laughs> what? You don't have, I don't have log, right? Huh? You, you don't want it to show log? Oh, no. no. Oh, no, did it actually run? Do you? Yeah, it, it, it run. Oh, you had the it's, it's reusable session. Oh, OK, OK, it was weird. See, green bar. Awesome. Green bar. <laughs> awesome. So based on those extensions, uh, uh, you kind of we started out being, we want to test something in a container, but based on the flexible and extendable um, nature of the Archelian core, we now allow us to test on multiple test frameworks on top, running against a herd of container types, against a herd of different uh, br browser types and cloud services, and then against a whole bunch of databases in, in the end, and then with the integration with the NoSQL extensions, you also have all the the uh, NoSQL data stores in the same in the same um, in the same engine and in the same environment. So, uh, uh, real quick to interrupt you, uh, go back on the slide. So, a bit of a challenge here. Uh, you know, if you want to get involved in the Archelian project, okay, that's, we, there's plenty of things to do. But there's another aspect here: is that if you want to be able to find a new way to use this concept for something perhaps we hadn't thought of, something, something uh, sort of cutting edge. So for instance, if you see, hey, we could control virtual machines here to do um, you know, environment testing maybe for local virtual machines or for cloud, you know, all of that infrastructure is there for you to build on. So you don't have to worry about uh, you know, inventing, for instance, a vent machine that's going to handle all of these things uh, within a test environment. But you can start to think, Okay, how would I write an extension that can control virtual machine? Is there some APIs that I can use in Archelian and in the uh, something like Ogre or, or, or whatever to, to wire this stuff together? Go for it. Research this stuff. Because um, the more that we can evolve testing and reach out into harder and harder things to test with the same simplicity that you're seeing with Warp, where it's controlling server side, it's controlling uh, containers, it's controlling a browser, Right? It's, it's handling a lot of things. We can keep, we can keep go, uh, going with that concept to uh, make what we would think as extremely complex tests to set up trivial. If you want to know more about Archelian, we have a Google Plus page that you can find the actual site and a lot of guides, etc., on the archelian.org webpage, where it's our main, main site. As far as source code, we're of course uh, Apache license, uh, and everything we do is basically on GitHub. 
You can find all the extensions, you can find the core, you can find yeah, the website as well and everything else we do, <laughs> basically. And as for today and as tomorrow and on Monday, uh, the, there is a hackfest that is taking place up in the uh, meeting room uh, B431, up in the fourth floor, uh, where, where amongst Archelian and Forge and a whole bunch of other projects will be hacking on different on different ideas that we have and hope that people will come along and, and basically explore the extension and the wonderful world of Archelian with us. <laughs> so, yeah. Any questions, if you have any more time? How much are we duplicating the functionality of Maven or Rabel? And can we integrate with that? I thought you, I think you already mentioned Maven, but can we also integrate with Rabel, for instance? Because we've got loads of stuff with Rabel. And uh, another question is about Groovy. Can we also? Uh, to answer the first one, uh, one of the things we're going to be doing at the Hackfest is to, uh, we spoke with Hans Doctor, which is the Gradle uh, creator, um, on DevOx. And during the DevOx Hack Hackfest, we started uh, making, or he wants Archelian to be the core uh, runner for all their uh, container lifecycle stuff. So that's what we started there. Uh, and we're going to continue on that now. So that will be, uh, that will hopefully soon enough be actually built in and be a, be a part of the core cradle, cradle infrastructure where you can then uh, bind to the, the life cycles of starting containers and stopping containers. Uh, currently, in, in the state of just being being able to test, you can run uh, Archelian in Gradle in the same way that, that you can in, in Maven. It just needs the, the dependencies. Uh, for Groovy, we already have uh, Spock integrations, if you know Spock. The, the, now that no, that's a, 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 a testing framework that is Groovy based, and we support we support that framework. Uh, I guess anything if you run JUnit in Groovy in general should work the same as well. So that's also one of the things that we're moving forward with, coming uh, uh, Archelian two and so on, is to look at more of the polyglot world uh, to actually have support for Ruby, have support for Groovy, have support for Scala, etc., and support the whole shebang. Yeah, the only complexity with using any other language other than just Java, compiled Java, is that because we're moving, relocating the tests into the server, whatever that language needs to run needs to go with all that other stuff. So the extension, a lot of uh, that, that extension is just saying, put jruby.jar in that thing and ship it over there, or if it already has it, figure out where it is and get it into its class path once it's there. So it's basically bootstrapping the language. Uh, but once that's done, you know, it doesn't matter what the test is written in. Mm. Uh, is there any Uh, for is, it, is it built for such Well, so yeah. that's a good question. We kind of glossed over that. But when we started out, right, the Archelian's goal was to get some sort of testing framework where we could test Java EE components because it just didn't exist. And along the way, we began to realize that the container, the definition of container, really isn't Java EE specific. It's really what you don't want to have to start and stop, manage, or whatever in your test. So no SQL unit um, is... A, a framework that we're, we're integrating with that does essentially the exact same thing for NoSQL databases that we're doing currently for Java EE and server containers. It's starting them, seeding them, uh, you know, dealing with whether it's an embedded remote, connecting to remote ones, whatever it is, all of that stuff outside of your test. And you just say, this test has access to that stuff. So that it absolutely applies. But it is, we're, you know, been stretching the boundaries of Archelian over the last uh, couple of years, but yeah, absolutely. Mm. Um, okay, I guess we're okay. out of time. All right. So if you have any more questions, right. I guess you can talk to them outside. Yeah. I have an announcement. Uh, you perhaps noticed there is